The last time we spoke to you, uh, Karen, was on Open House. That was with Sheridan Voisey. Mm. And um, we, we talked to you about your journey with bipolar. Mm. Um, that was maybe seven, seven years ago? Yeah. That was diagnosed in 2008. How have you been travelling since then? Tell us, you know, your journey, if you like. Oh, wow. What a journey. Um, yeah, I have gotten, I have become unwell again. I have been, you know, and then I become well and then unwell. So it's been actually quite like a, you know, a rocky road. I think it's only been the last maybe, um, maybe now I'd say uh, two, two years that I have been now a sort of a, a slow process towards this point where I've been the best I have ever been. You know, thank God for that. So it's been a real journey in terms of, I think, learning about my sickness, understanding it, and I think acceptance, um, and also a weird thing of like, you know, actually taking responsibility for it too, and sitting with the unknown parts of it. Some parts is just a mystery, and to just go, that's okay. And then, but also being, pursuing understanding of it too, so that I know how to prevent and manage. And how do I like, you know, in terms of, um, you know, with my family and my friends, bring them to forward to to a place where I understand that yeah, I'm I'm doing well now, and so we don't have to be in that crisis mode. And and I'm just when I have a you know when something doesn't go right, we don't go straight back to that sense of oh, something's going to happen. Well, you know, it won't. And also my faith too has definitely stepped up, and you know, um, has consolidated all the more, but also. A certain thankfulness, which is weird, come out of it that I am thankful for it. How has your journey with Jesus gone through your journey through bipolar? Yeah, it's been oh, it's been moments of like, you know, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? And um, then other moments of just going, God, you know, like um, I can't do anything, and this is yours. And then. Um, then understanding also his promises that he will not take us through more than we can handle. That um, that also Jesus, he is also my um, you know my king and my savior. But also he's the path that he walks. He's asking, going, take it up because I want you to walk this too. And you think about it and you go, well, it makes sense because Jesus walked a path of deep suffering, more than anyone could possibly handle. Of deep uh, you know, heartache and and darkness too and that doesn't mean that everyone is like you know it's going to happen to everyone but everyone will have a moment depending on degrees of that sense of I don't know what's happening God and this is this is dark and this hurts and but through it Jesus has shown that the greatest victory comes through those moments the greatest learning the greatest molding and the greatest like you know, in terms of an understanding and peace comes from it too and that through it there is rest. Um, I think that in this world sometimes it's you know very much it's about the, it's a moment it's like it has to be right straight away the solution comes and it's all good and it's about this single moment but Jesus says it's not it's about a process it's about it's something that continues on and I can say that yeah I still have you know have moments where I really struggle and go oh, I'm not sure I can do this but the thing is that I also know who he is now more than ever, you know, what he has done for me and how my relationship with him is, you know, um, held not because I hold tight, it's because he holds me tight. What things have you found helpful, you know, in your hard times mm. um, to keep you going and get through? I think um, definitely, um, you know, it's my church, my uh, my friends, my husband, definitely they have been you know a blessing to me, in terms of like uh, being my support, and um, reminding me or when I can't do it or when I'm at a loss, you know, uh, they have been my hands and my feet, you know. Um, but I know that also you know there are a lot of people out there who don't have that either. So in that sense, for me, when I was also at my loneliest place and no one could get through, is that Edie's prayer was, you know, definitely one of the most important things. And also 
looking at God's promises that, you know, um, he says that he is for us and nothing can be against us, that nothing can separate us from his love, that we, he is there to help us and uphold us with his righteous right hand. I mean, these are promises and promises that he keeps and that he will continue to keep. And I think, you know, also the simple things, take care of yourself in the simple ways, eat well, sleep well, you know, um, uh, you know, go out, get some sun, take walks, you know, even when it's, you know, when it's hard, do those things, you know. So there's a lot, it's a, so many facets. Yeah. And I think it's also like important to help me. Um, I sort of need to help those outside of me um, understand what's going on. So it's like sometimes it's your inside voice, make it your outside voice, tell people, this is what's happening, you know, and this is what I have. I find it hard, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not quite understanding it myself, but, you know, and tell them what helps, you know, tell them what is, you know, what could work for you and, yeah, not, um, not to stay silent because sometimes that's what you do, you stay silent and you need to talk, you need to voice it, you need to speak up. Yep. What advice would you give to someone who's facing mental health struggles at the moment and finding it hard? What, what, what are some hope that you could give to them, some suggestions? Well, um, don't be by yourself, first of all. If you can, reach out. Because being by yourself is the one thing that will, will definitely take you even further down. Because you cannot do it on your own. Now, whether it be reach out to your friends, it, that's, yeah, that, that's one thing, because they're going to stick by you or reach out to um, a doctor or a psychologist or even Lifeline or, you know, call up some kind of, you know, phone, you know, one of those uh, organisations that have got a helpline. You call them up and reach out and they talk to someone because it sounds very different. Once you get it out there and you hear it from the other person, whether it be a doctor or, and they put some framework around it, somehow things get a little bit more sort of, oh, maybe, maybe, just maybe I can do this. Um, I think that would be the, the first thing you should do. Get out there and get to the other, get to someone, reach out because yeah, I think that's the first step and they will also tell you what the best you know, next steps are. Yeah. So for you and your husband uh, and planning for a future, uh, a family and stuff, where, where are you with that? Um, are you looking at having a family of your own? Is that something that you would like? Yeah, I mean, I do. I, I really, you know, that's something that I am hopeful and prayerful for. Um, for the last, I mean, you know, in terms of uh, the last years, I haven't been able to because of medication. It has, you know, it has kept me because of the type of medication I'm on. You know, at the moment, I am actually starting to cut back and um, it's, you know, it, towards hopefully that point or where I can have children. And I think, you know, there, there's a part of me that's in two places. I guess there's one part and just go, oh man, I can't, I'm, I'm trying to sort out how to take care of myself. How am I going to take care of, you know, someone else? But I think that's a journey that's not just myself, but I think everyone who takes on that journey of, you know, uh, when they have children that I think everyone you know, kind of deals with that and has to struggle through that kind of, you know, all those those thoughts and those thinking and stuff like that. So I get, I'm not the only one, but at the same time, I think, you know, it's, yeah, it will be, it's something that I'm just, yeah, working towards and my husband and I are hope, you know, hoping for, yeah. So at the moment, what's on your bucket list? <laughs> wow, <coughs> my bucket list, hmm. I think there's, um, I want to stay healthy <laughs> and, you know, I want to just, you know, keep capitalising on what God is teaching me about myself and my life and who I am and all the potential that I have because I'm finally seeing it more than I have ever seen it. So in that sense, it's just, it is a bucket list to just, you know, to be healthy and to, and to, to just now have the opportunity to hope and to dream and to actually be able to now know what it means to hope and dream. But I do also want to swim with whale sharks. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's a good thing to do. Where would you do that? I think it's in Ningaloo where you can actually do that. So, yeah. Cool. That's something, you know, I've always thought, hmm, that's kind of, that'd be cool. <laughs>